So back in January, I made a video about 20 things I don't buy or pay for. Things that I personally just don't care about, don't find value in, and even some things that I think are out and out scams. And you guys seem to really like that video. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll leave a card up here and put a link in the description box down below as well. But as I was making that video, it really made me think, I could probably go on forever listing things that I personally just don't care about and don't find any value in, but it made me wonder what I actually do care about. What are the things that I actually think are worth investing money in? The truth is that I'm a pretty simple person and I live a pretty simple life and it doesn't take a lot to make me happy. As somebody who grew up poor, I also learned to find appreciation in the small things in life and to be happy with what I have. In the time since, a lot has changed in my life, but deep down, I'm still very much the same person. With that said, there are some things that I have found over time that I personally think are worth investing in. Things that I find tremendous value in and that I'm very happy to spend my money on, maybe even to a point of excess at times. And so in this video, I'm gonna share with you a list of seven things that I'm actually very happy to spend my money on. And hopefully it'll give you a little bit of understanding, a little bit of context as to how you can attribute value to things and how you can decide what is worth investing in and what is not. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing that I'm very happy to spend my money on freely is healthy food. This one should be pretty self-explanatory as we all have heard the saying, you are what you eat. But even being less corny than that, I do find that the food that I put in my body has a dramatic effect on how I feel physically, mentally, emotionally. It affects my energy level, it affects my skin, it affects pretty much everything and it makes perfect sense, right? The food that we eat is the fuel that helps us run our bodies. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I do make a conscientious effort to shop for sales, to price match, to coupon, to do whatever I can to reduce my grocery bill overall. But the fact is that as somebody who cooks 99% of their meals at home and does so from scratch, regardless of what I'm spending at the grocery store, I'm probably still spending a lot less than I would be if I was getting takeout or going to restaurants. I'm also in a fortunate position where because I live alone, I really only have to buy food for myself. And so my grocery bills are always gonna be significantly lower than it would be if I was shopping for a whole family, which means that I can splurge a little bit and spend a little bit more freely on groceries just for myself. I'm vegan and I eat a predominantly whole food based diet, which means that as it turns out, the majority of my staple foods are things that are pretty inexpensive naturally. I eat a lot of beans, a lot of pasta, rice, potatoes, fresh veggies, things like that that are generally not very expensive to begin with. Because most of my groceries are so inexpensive, I really have no problem justifying the odd thing here and there that isn't. For example, I really love in-season fresh local produce, especially in the spring and summertime, fresh berries, fresh apples. In fact, I think last summer I might've eaten about $50 worth of cherries. I'll happily spend five to $6 on a fresh baked loaf of bread from a bakery rather than spending three or $4 on a gross loaf of squishy, nasty tasting wonder bread, which basically tastes like the plastic bag that it comes in really, that's not bread, sorry. Hot take alert, Wonder Bread is not bread. It's like soft like Play-Doh and it tastes like plastic. And if you think Wonder Bread is bread, I'm really sorry to break it to you, but you probably never had bread. Even the occasional thing that I buy that is somewhat processed, like some non-dairy yogurt or the occasional meat alternative, I don't scrutinize the price too much. Overall, I like the items that I buy. It's important to me that I eat food that I actually enjoy and that actually makes me feel good when I eat it. And so knowing that I'm only spending about 250 to $300 a month on groceries anyways, I don't scrutinize the prices too much. The second thing that I spend excessively on is not a thing at all. It is my best buddy in the whole world and it is Levi. Levi is my 11 year old Norfolk Terrier and he is my ride or die. He's the yin to my yang. He's my best buddy. He's basically my little furry adopted son. And I love him with all my heart in case you guys couldn't tell from the way that I'm gloating about him right now. Um, but he is an expensive guy to take care of. It's always been very important to me to feed him the healthiest food possible, to give him the best vet care, and to basically do whatever I can to help him live the longest, healthiest, happiest life possible. But a year and a half ago, he was diagnosed with a heart condition, which is genetic and something that his breed gets quite often. And let me tell you something, it is expensive. Holy shit. This might sound crazy, and maybe to some of you it is crazy, but after my mortgage, he's actually my single biggest expense every year when you factor in all of his vet bills. Just like a person who has a heart condition, he has to have regular echocardiograms, blood pressure checks, chest x-rays, blood work, medications, it never really seems to stop. I think that as a Canadian, I'm pretty spoiled because if I have to go to the doctor or the hospital, I'm not handed a bill on the way out. But as a result of that, it really leaves you feeling ill-prepared for how expensive these services actually are when you have to pay for them out of pocket. And woo, it's a lot. I love this boy more than anything in the world. And if money alone could fix all of his problems, I would happily shell out whatever it costs. But I would be lying if I said that there aren't days where I feel a little bit resentful, not towards him, but just towards the general expenses that come associated with having him at this stage in life. For example, last month, I had to take him in for a follow-up for his cardiac issues. They did a whole bunch of tests and it cost me almost $2,000, which I really could think of better things to spend $2,000 on than at the vet. 
but you know what, it is what it is. And the truth be told, I don't know that there's anything that I could spend that money on that would make me happier. Like there are certain things that I need, certain things that I could do with that money, but nothing that I could buy makes me happier than he makes me. I just wish that it was for good things. I wish I could take that money and spoil him. I wish I could take that money and travel with him. I wish I didn't have to spend it on something that is wrong with him, if that makes sense. In the video about the things I don't pay for, I mentioned not having pet insurance and I mentioned that I don't think it's worthwhile. And right now you might be a little bit confused, but the truth is that I have kept all of the invoices from the very day that I got him all the way till now for every vet appointment he's ever had. And if you add it all up over the last 11 years, I'm actually still very far ahead of where I would have been had I been paying premiums and deductibles and all that other stuff that comes along with having insurance. But it definitely does feel like a lot all at once to be going and spending $2,000 every six months or every year or whatever it comes out to. The third thing that I'm happy to spend a lot of money on, which may come across a little bit strange from somebody like me, is clothing. I say that as somebody who does not have a lot of clothing. In fact, I have a very small wardrobe. And if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you'll notice that I wear pretty much the same thing almost every day. Like this top, I probably have like 10 of them just like this. It fits me, I like it, and it wasn't expensive at all. But I'm somebody who's always struggled to buy clothing. I've struggled to find clothing that fits. I don't know how it comes across on the camera, but I'm actually pretty tall and somewhat slender for my height. Like I'm 5'7 and about 130 pounds with a belly full of pasta. And unlike most people who are taller, my height is not predominantly my legs, but actually in my torso. And to be honest with you, I'm a little bit self-conscious about it almost because sometimes I feel like an orangutan, like I have really long arms and a really long stomach but it makes it very difficult to find clothing that fits me well because the things that are long enough are often too baggy and the things that are slender enough are often too small. Finding sweaters and jackets that don't leave my back bare and cold is a mission and a half. It's not at all unusual for me to put on a sweater or a jacket and have the sleeves come up like halfway up my arm and it looks like I'm wearing a little kid's sweater. It's very annoying. Then add on top of that, trying to find things that are high quality, that are well made, that are gonna wash and wear nicely and last a long time. Things that are ethically made, things that are comfortable to wear and it is not the easiest thing in the world. So on the odd occasion that I do find something that fits me well, that I like, it's high quality. To be honest with you, within reason, I often don't really look at the price tag, especially once again, because I don't have a lot of clothing as it is. I'm perfectly okay to invest more amounts of money in fewer pieces that are higher quality and that actually fit my body, rather than just being cold and uncomfortable and feeling like an orangutan in a little kid's sweater. One of my favorite pieces of clothing and one of the more high-end things that I own are the jeans that I'm wearing right now. I wear them pretty much every day. They're made by Nudie, they're organic cotton, they're made ethically, they're really good quality. And to be honest with you, I think that they're pretty expensive for jeans. Now I myself did get them on sale and I paid a pretty reasonable price for them. But the truth is that even if I had to pay for them out of pocket, I think the sticker price is usually about $200 or so. I'd personally be perfectly okay with paying that, knowing that so far they've lasted me a lot longer than any other jeans have. They're a lot more comfortable. I think they're more flattering fit and they're just a better quality fabric and better quality craftsmanship. Item number four that I'm happy to spend a lot of money on is one that's probably gonna be a little bit controversial, but it is my home, it is my house. There's probably a lot of layers to unwrap here, but we'll start with comfort. Comfort is subjective. What somebody finds comfortable might be different than what I find comfortable, but having a home that is comfortable, I think is something that everybody wants and something that everybody aspires to. And so for me, having a home that is comfortable, not just in the furniture that I have, but in the aesthetic of it, of the way that it looks, of the way that things function is very important to me. I'm also a pretty visual person and I work partially from home. So as somebody who spends quite a bit of time here, it's important to me to have a home that looks the way that I want it to look, that leaves me feeling serene and tranquil. And just like I'm at home, like I don't wanna feel like I'm in a house, I wanna feel like I'm at home. Another aspect is equity. If you're fortunate enough to own your home, to some extent, any upgrades you put in will actually add value, add equity to your home and can actually increase the value if you go to sell it in the future. If you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know that I moved in here last June and then almost immediately started some pretty significant renovations, which included removing a wall, gutting the kitchen, putting new stairs, new flooring, all of that good stuff. And it was probably the most money I've ever spent on anything ever other than the house itself. But to me, it's totally worth it because I was able to transform this home from something that felt icky and dated and dirty. It was so dirty and so unkept and turned it into something that feels like mine, something that I actually feel comfortable in, something that when I walk through the door, I don't feel stressed and grossed out and like I wanna crawl out of my own skin, but I feel like I'm comfortable and I'm in somewhere where I'm happy to be. 
I recognize that there's a lot of privilege in what I'm saying right now in the ability to not only own your home, but have the means to upgrade it and fix it up and make it to your likings and keep it modern and fresh. It's not something everybody can do. And I totally understand that. And I don't think that upgrading your home or investing in it has to be expensive. And I think it's something you can do even if you rent, it might mean occasionally buying yourself a new piece of furniture, or it might mean occasionally putting a new coat of paint on the walls, just small things that help you feel like you're in a place that you want to be in. Owning a house is an ongoing project. It seems like there's almost always something that needs attention or needs money put into it. And it's not always feasible for me to be able to do everything all at once. But when I do have a little bit of extra money that I'm able to spend, this is a great place that I like to put it because I think that, like I said, there's a return on the investment. And overall, it really does affect my quality of life more so than most other things do. So up till now, everything that I've talked about, I think has been somewhat reasonable and practical, things that everybody has to pay for to some extent. We've talked about food, clothing, housing, etc. Let's finally jump into something that is just for fun, something that's an actual splurge, and that is concert tickets. Concert tickets are probably the one thing that I do splurge on myself that's purely a luxury item. I don't have Netflix or Spotify or any services like that. I don't go out to clubs or bars. I rarely go to restaurants. I don't travel very much, but concert tickets are totally my thing. If one of my favorite bands is coming to town, I mostly don't look at the price. I just kind of buy the ticket and think about it later. And that's probably the only thing I can say that about where I'm kind of just careless about it and kind of just frivolous and it is what it is. And again, the reason I justify it is because knowing that I don't spend excessively on pretty much anything else and that I don't spend on entertainment in particular most of the time, whatever I'm spending on a yearly basis in concert tickets, even if it seems like a lot for one evening out, it probably adds up to a lot less than most people are actually spending otherwise. But concerts are pretty much that one thing that I do to just have a night off, to just have a fun night out with my friends, to be fully present in the experience that's happening right in front of me. I'm not somebody who's gonna watch it through my phone screen while I'm taking a video or a photo. That's not my vibe. And yeah, I go to maybe five to 10 concerts a year and it is what it is. And I'm happy to spend money on it because I find a lot of joy in doing that. Item number six is more of a category than a specific item, but it's peace of mind. This can mean different things to different people, but personally it means investing in things that are going to reduce or eliminate or mitigate stress for me. A good example would be when I bought my car. I bought a car that's used, it was pre-owned, it was a lease return, and I'm not fancy about it and I didn't finance it, but it was important to me to get a car that was gonna be reliable for the long run. So I bought a Toyota and I recognized that I probably could have bought the equivalent car from a different manufacturer and saved a few thousand dollars. But as most of us know, there's a lot of cars that just don't last that long where the engines give out after year five or six or eight. Yep. And it's so much aggravation. Not only are you then required to buy a new car all over again, but the aggravation of being broken down on the side of the road or having an unreliable way to get to and from work. It's something that to me, it's just, it's a big stressor to think about. And so I know that if I'm buying a Toyota, I'm buying a Honda, again, I'm probably paying a little bit more upfront, but I'm buying myself so much peace of mind knowing that I have a reliable car and I don't have to worry about whether or not it's gonna start when I put the key in the engine. I know what's wrong with it. It's a Ford. Similarly, when it comes to owning a phone, I'm not somebody who gets the newest model at any point. I keep my phone for a very long time. I buy the oldest, cheapest model that's available typically when I am about to upgrade, but I wanna make sure that the phone I have is usable, it's reliable, it doesn't drop calls, it allows me to run my business, which is also really important. I try to squeeze every drop of value out of my phone and hold onto it for as long as possible, but the day that it becomes unreliable, I really don't think twice about just upgrading and getting something that's actually gonna do what it needs to do. Other purchases that I would consider to be peace of mind investments would be appliances in your home, security related purchases, and anything else that can affect your health, your safety, or your ability to earn a living. Now, speaking of earning a living, the seventh and final thing on my list of things that I'm happy to spend excessively on are investments in myself. And once again, this can mean different things to different people. This might mean investing in equipment to help you start a business. This might mean investing in books or classes or courses to help you better yourself or to learn a new skill that you can then market and make into a job. For me, the most obvious one that comes to mind is the filming equipment that I use to make these YouTube videos. When I first bought this camera, it was on speculation. I didn't know if this YouTube channel was ever gonna be something that would become anything. I didn't even know honestly if I would stick to it but I took a gamble and told myself that I was gonna try to stick it out and see if it was something I liked and it turned into something that I love and so buying this camera and buying the equipment that I needed was absolutely a good investment when it comes to items or supplies that I need for my business I mostly don't hesitate I just kind of buy what I need to buy knowing that there's gonna be a return on that investment it's not gonna be money burnt it's gonna be money spent to help me make more money or to help me accomplish something in my personal life that's important to me that I find fulfilling so as you can probably tell from this video, I've only listed seven things that I'm happy to invest in, whereas I listed 20 things in the previous video, and that was actually the second video I made like that. So I listed so far 40 things on this channel that I don't spend money on and that I don't care about, 
versus just seven that I actually do. But personally, I think that's actually quite reasonable. Most things in life are dumb. Most things in life are useless. Most things in life that are sold to us are only sold to us to generate profit, not because we actually need those things or because they actually add to our life in any way. And of course there's subjectivity to all of this, but I think that's really important is when you're making a purchase to look at it and decide, is this something that aligns with my values? Is this something that's actually gonna benefit me? Is this something that I actually find true value in, whether that value is emotional, monetary, or otherwise? I know for a fact that the money that I spend on these seven items probably still adds up to a lot less than the money that other people might spend on the other 40 items that I find no value in whatsoever. But I think life's all about balance. It's about saying no to some things so you have the opportunity to say yes to other things. And I think that that's pretty much how the world works as a whole. Compromise, that's the word I'm looking for. Compromise, balance, compromise. I'm very curious to know your thoughts on the items I've mentioned in this video, but even more importantly, I'm very curious to know what specifically you guys invest your money in. What is something that you find a lot of value in and that you're happy to spend a lot of money on? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you found any value in it, or even you just found it entertaining, please go ahead and hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. You can follow me on Instagram at according underscore two underscore Nicole. Other than that, thank you guys so much as always for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care and I will see you next week.